Hey guys, it's Yorker here, and welcome to the channel for some more Challenges Pack DLC Assetto Corsa Competition gameplay with the Audi R8 LMS Evo 2. Quickly jumping into the setup before we go into this one. Uh, increase the camera slightly as well as the caster, and obviously adjust the tire pressures, but pretty much everything that you can adjust on a GT3 car, you can adjust here on this GT3 car. Um, drop the front brake pads to pad one. Dial the rear brake bias more rearwards. Less preload differential. Up the fast bump and rebound. Also the normal rebound. And then you can adjust stuff here. However, I haven't done so. However, there is no splitter, so you can't adjust that. Ten seconds. So, starting from the danger zone here at Spa, Franco Champs. Back of the pack. Although it looks like there are a few cars Stay double five. that haven't actually jumped onto the grid have disappeared somewhere along the line so let's see how this uh, this one actually goes could be interesting it's an open public lobby so I'm sure calamity will ensue and at some point we'll try and talk about the handling of this car and what my uh, what my first early thoughts are with the uh, with this new Audi R8 Evo 2. It's a little bit worrying as I was not entirely sure whereabouts I'm meant to be, probably in around here. Let's go for that. Okay. How? 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 How have we avoided all this? What the actual fuck? Not a single bit of contact with that. Oh man. Call me Moses. Alright. Um, yeah, let's try and go on top of the car. Let's settle in. There's a slow car ahead. I told you, calamity will ensue. I just wasn't quite expecting that much. Car on the left. Um, on the left. We're up in the top ten, really. <laughs> this race, man. Oh my god, the memes already. Uh, public lobbies for you. Brilliant. Okay, well, this is going to be an interesting 20 minutes. But yeah, let's let's talk about this car then. Let's see how Audi it really is. Um, the interesting thing is I haven't actually driven Spa at full tilt yet. So I don't know what the car is actually going to be like through Arouge and Radion, where the previous Audis were very, very dangerous and very, very scary unless you managed to absolutely nail the dampers. Um, so yeah, I don't know what I don't know what Arusha Radion has in store for us in completely clear air. Um, hopefully not death. Hopefully it'll be all okay, but uh, we shall see. We shall see. Yellow flag, yellow flag. Be careful there. It's still not done. I'm in a P8 by the end. And. I mean, I thought I was dead even before I got to a rouge. Somehow we're not. But yeah, we might die here. Let's see. Let's just see how this goes. Okay. Not, not too bad as there's other people dying. Still. Um. Yeah, not too bad. Okay. Alright, let's see if we can catch the cars up in front. Whilst also talking about uh, the handling of this car. So, the car is, I've been saying, how Audi-like is this Audi. And it's really quite Audi-like. Um, if you've driven the previous 
Audi R8, you'll know that uh, even look like uh, a little bit funny. Um, the car throws massive wobbly and uh, tends to spit you off the track in a horribly big ball of smoke. And you got a one-way ticket to uh, to the barriers. My Audis do not like curbs. And this car's not really too much different. Obviously, I can use the curbs here at Spa because the, the curbs at Spa aren't too, aren't too aggressive. So, Spa, you can get away with it. For some of the circuits, um, you definitely can't. I tried a race out at Kailami earlier, for example, and some of the curbs there are quite... Uh, Quite big, quite bumpy, and quite aggressive. Some cars can take those curves fairly well, such as the inside curb on turn two. Also, the curves after sunset. Um, they can be all right for a number of cars as well, if you kind of catch them and ride them in the right places. Um, however, for the Audi, it's very much a no-no. The car does not like them one bit whatsoever. So, yeah, very much Audi things there, um, with regards to handling of this latest Evo 2 version. Obviously, brand new car for 2023. Stay over there. Thank you. Yeah, brand new car for 2023. 22. Sorry, it's 2022, isn't it? Not 2023. Yeah, it seems like if you don't come completely off the throttle uh, going through a Rouge and Radeon, you should be fine uh, with a near default setup. So the car is a lot, lot friendlier than the previous Audis, which is good. Um, it's kind of what you'd expect, to be fair, uh, from a, an updated Evo version. So it's the second Evo, Evo version of the Audi R8 LMS. One other thing that this car does very, very well is braking. It's probably one of the stronger cars when it comes to braking power in the GT3 field, I think, from what I've found so far. It is very, very good on the brakes. Um, one that I could brake a good five, maybe ten meters in some instances later in a number of braking zones uh, than I can with, with other cars. It kind of does depend on the track and obviously the setup and also the track conditions. Um, but yeah, the car is extremely good on the brakes. Which is quite nice to see. And then when it comes to the handling in the corners, very much a mid-engine car. Um, it does rotate quite nicely in the mid-corner. Um, as you may have seen, a little bit of on-power oversteer, um, but generally the car is quite easy to drive. I'd say it's easier to drive out than the, than the previous versions of the uh, versions of the Audi. Especially if you can be quite cautious with the uh, power coming off the corner kind of leaning into the traction control a little bit. But yeah, I'm very much a stickler for uh, how the front engine cars drive. I reckon you might be able to take radio and flat out, you know, to get the line right with this car. Might try that later on in the race. Um, yeah, I, generally I tend to prefer front-engined cars. I uh, work with them a lot better and they just tend to suit my driving style more than a mid-engine car does. I've driven the old Audi R8 way back when, when I very first started up in the AOR leagues and I just could not get on with the car at all. I started to at one point, but I was just still really, really struggling. So halfway through the season, I switched uh, to the Mercedes AMG, not the Evo version, but 
the uh, the old one fire and immediately started getting much better results, feeling much happier and much more comfortable with the car. But this one's really not that bad. Although, driving that I have been doing has been in public lobbies, so I don't know what it's actually like in kind of a more league, close-knit, kind of tied-off community sort of environment where drivers are a lot more equally matched. So I don't know what the uh, the BOP of the uh, the car is actually like on various tracks, but it seems to hold up reasonably well. But as you can see, it looks like I'm quite a bit more confident on the brakes than the McLaren in front going into the bus stop chicane. But there might be an element of driver skill here as well if they're I'm doing 221s and I'm doing 19s. Also got a lap car up in front of us as well. Be careful with that. Didn't want to go flat out this time because I'm you know in the draft of the car in front. So I'm gonna have slightly less downforce that way. Also, if they're doing a big lift, I don't want to be going full throttle and then just pound straight into the back of them. The way, Mark. Still a long way to go. Car on the left. Clear on the left. Get rid of that overstead. There was the move. Well, I didn't really fight it too much. Too difficult to uh, creep on through that. Hopefully, this lap car gets out of the way. Or at least doesn't impede us. But yeah, B10, naturally aspirated. Just like the previous. Power rates. So, rev it to your heart's content. Yeah, you're quite, quite nicely out of the way, thank you very much. Alright, let's see if we can hunt down the, uh, the guys at the front here. You can see the race leader going through the bus stop chicane there, way off in the distance. Third, just in front of us. The main thing that I am noticing with the braking with this Audi as well is, although the brakes are very, very good, you need to be doing it in a straight line. As you can see, the ABS light flickering like absolute crazy. That was flat, but it wasn't legal. Okay, I think you could do a rouge flat with some slight tweaks to uh, the aero balance. You could probably do that or not. That out with the uh, with this R8. Stay there on the entry. Very much a mid engine car sort of trait. With the weight the, uh, towards the rear of the car. We've got all the weight on the front wheels. The rear wheels are a little bit light, and the car just wants to rotate around the centre. Which is, I guess, a trait of all the modern mid engine cars. They do very, very well in the uh, in the middle of corners. Just like to uh, rotate quite nicely.
get quite a bit of lap time that way. <laughs> yeah, I think this, uh, I'd say this car probably produces more downforce than the previous Audi R8 as well. And I checked it, or done any setup work, kind of tested to see if that's reflected in the data, but obviously the real world car has an updated aero package. The car has an updated aero package, shall I say. Therefore, the downforce should be a little bit more efficient. Downforce to drag ratio. See. That will help with uh, whip top speed. Also help with the performance in the car in the corners as well. Be interesting to see how many teams actually adopt the car. And uh, take it on fairly early on in the season because it's kind of one of those slight transition periods yes it's the debut season for the for the car so there are some kind of more works bigger factory teams running the new version but I imagine some of the uh, smaller customer teams running the uh, the previous generation R8 for certainly this season They'll probably pick up the Evo 2 version come next season once uh, factory teams have a bit more data to share and uh, some tips how to drive the car. Because the old, the old cars, although they were very, very popular in the GT3 field, obviously must have been fairly reasonably priced, or there must have been a lot available uh, for teams to actually pick up and run in a series. Drivers did say it's quite a, uh, can be a tricky car to handle at times. Kind of had to really balance it right on the, uh, right on the knife edge. Got a lot of performance, obviously a very, very quick car, very successful car, the Audi R8. Keeping it inside that window is what a lot of lesser experienced drivers were saying that they were finding quite difficult to get in that performance out of the car. But so far, for me, it seems to have been uh, quite compliant. Which is, which is nice, because yeah, as I was saying earlier, do tend to struggle with mid-engine cars, and I was expected to struggle a fair amount with this one. But alas, we are not. There you go, that's completely flat out, that's going to be legal. Indeed it is. So yeah, even without really any sort of tweaks to the downforce, able to do ready on flat out, which is quite nice. Very confidence inspiring. Very careful with the curves. Oh, it's a little bit loose there. And kind of wanted to move around on me a little bit. Second and third here. Lined up quite nicely for us. Second's going to be hoping that third is going to defend and battle quite hard with me. Hold me up so they can build a little bit of a gap to secure that position. Third's probably worrying about the fact that I'm coming up and closing up behind. So kind of spurred on that they've been closing up onto P2. But, uh, yeah, we're going to be going into the last lap here. Let's see how this last lap actually plays out. Yeah, 
to try and clear this McLaren as soon as possible. Not going to quite be able to do it before I rouge. Oh, McLaren's got to run on the other McLaren. I mean, I didn't get a run on either of them. Side by side in front, coming to the com. McLaren on the inside's break a little bit early. The one on the left has gone a little bit deep and taken the position. Car on the right. Clear on the right. Just like that, P2's lost two positions. Got a little bit eager there on the sort of on the inside curb. It's out of the rear from. Now we just gotta have a nice, clean, tidy end to the lap and see if we can try and get ourselves into a position where we can make a move coming into the bus stop. about done enough to uh, hold me off here. Morning, Frank's eating chocolates. Yeah, that's pretty fair. Not going to be close enough. Maybe on exit. That's definitely a no-no, but P3 in the end. But what was <coughs> an absolute meme of a race. That race start was just absolutely ridiculous. It's not. I mean, I was expecting public lobby things, but I was not expecting those that amount of public lobby things. But either way, there you go. There's the first drive or first video of the Audi R8 LMS Evo 2. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you've got any comments or questions, feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. And if you're new here, please consider subscribing. It would be very much appreciated. But otherwise, I'll hopefully catch you in the next video. Until then, have fun, stay safe, take care.